Welcome to Small Talk episode 30. This is the Small Talk Retrospective Rewatch Podcast. I'm one third of your co-host. My name is Ryan Cam. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This week, we're going to be talking about one really, really, really great episode and two that are just in a race to the bottom. One that's not really bad per se and one that's just not horrible, but just like the cringe emoji that you see in i like if you have an iphone just for an hour or so but we'll cross that bridge when we get there i have to introduce my co-hosts first of all from 3d movie cinema it's jacob collins who is appropriately dressed for this episode i'm doing great man i really like this episode i'm so decked out one of my favorite episodes is in this episode that i've loved since i was a kid that we're gonna we're, i'm sure we're gonna throw down on one episode because I have a difference of opinion on that one episode you're talking about. This is, I really enjoy, I, I will say one episode I didn't care for, but the rest I thought were fun episodes. Um, I will say Onyx is so good. And yeah, th- this is really fun. I mean, Onyx is really well done. And I can't believe, you know, that we're, we're able to talk about these three, where I can't believe we're almost at the finish line, you know, and that's what really matters that we're almost there. And Brian, by the way, do you still have, do you still think he's Oliver Queen, by the way? I told you I gave that up a long time ago. He was, me and Matt were just laughing about that going, really, he really, what? truly thinks. He <laughs> really, truly thinks. Yeah, he literally thought that he was Oliver Queen. And we were like, <laughs> how does that make any goddamn sense if he's Oliver Queen? Hey, why would he, why would he, rich, why would he change his name? I why would he, change, why would he hide his identity? Similar. What, 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 I mean, what, what angle would he, what benefit would bring him for hiding his identity? Who is a publicly, publicly a billionaire. <laughs> Their backstories were similar. That's my only defense. But Matt Wyatt is also here. Matt, how are you? I'm glad to be here, and I'm excited to get into Onyx, the one that we've been like anticipating to talk about for a while now. And the the Lucy episode, okay. The the spirit dog shit. It was dog <laughs> shit. I laugh, but it's it's so bad, but it's so funny. I, I was enjoying it. I've enjoyed it since I was ten years old watching that. I was like, what are we doing? <laughs> Is this like fucking Regina George meets Carrie? It's like Mean Girls, but with Superman. <laughs> that, that that's a, like a bone. It's like an icing on a cake. I was waiting like, for Rachel McAdams to appear in this episode. Or Lindsay <laughs> Lohan. <laughs> yeah, I, I swear to God, Miller and Goff's blockbuster haul that week must have contained the Man in the Iron Mask and Mean Girls because they, <laughs> like many and shows. Heather's and probably Heather's like they're like probably. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if you think about it, it's like, look, we got 22 episodes. What do we do? Man in the Iron Man Mask and Mean Girls, guys. Go, 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 go. Run, run, write this episode. All right. It felt like, it, it felt like they were in the writer's room just yelling at them. It's like, okay, come on. We got to get this going. We got to get the Man in the Iron Mask. We got to get Mean Girls. Come on. We got 20, we got five more episodes to go. Also, we got to rip off Buffy the Vampire Slayer prom episode. Because literally they do in the episode. We'll talk about it, but like. They rip off Buffy the Vampire Slayer's prom episode. Literally, this something similar happens. I was watching. If you this re- going, if you really think about it, because Stephen S. The Knight was part of Buffy. because you because you they're know stealing. that Stephen S. The Knight was part of the the, the writers and producers of, of this season, and he was also part of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So yeah, he borrowed it from that other show that he. You would think on. he would say like, "Hey guys, you know they kind of did this already." You know, instead they're just like, "Alter it. We could still do it, just alter it a little." As a, uh, as a wise philosopher once said, if you steal from one thing, it's stealing. If you steal from multiple things, it's research. But uh, let's... Uh, Mr. Martin said that, George R.R. <laughs> but let's, uh, let's dive into these episodes proper, starting things off with season four, episode 16. I'm not talking about the Luke Basson movie of the same name. This episode <laughs> is called Lucy. <laughs> The WB Wednesday's all fresh. There's a new girl in town. So far, it looks pretty good. But there's more to her. Clark, I'm in trouble. That beats the eye. This is my sister, Lucy. Fresh new Smallville. Lois's sister, Lucy, arrives on the Ken farm after she ran away from a boarding school in Switzerland because she owed $50,000 to a loan shark. She enlists the help of Clark, Lois, and Lex to deal with the gangster, Marcus Becker the most generic gangster name of all time. But everything isn't quite what it seems for Lucy, has because she has a secret agenda, since she is not only a spoiled rich girl, but a sociopath con artist just as evil as Mr. Becker. Meanwhile, Lana's apartment is broken into, only 
Only one thing is missing, the Kryptonian knowledge crystal retrieved from China. Both Lex and Lionel deny any knowledge of the break-in and accuse each other of stealing it. But who is telling the truth? So yeah, today I learned that, or well, not today, but the day I watched this episode, Lois Lane has a sister? Because I was going to go in there thinking like, oh great, it's the Lex Luthor, like Jason situation. Like, like remember Jason Luther from season two? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Uh, or was that his name? No, it was Julian. Was you're thinking? No, it was Julian. Julian. The other one yeah, you're thinking. That's... I know you're thinking. You're thinking the other guy from season. Oh, two I, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul Wesley's character. I, God, why am I blanking on his name? He was in season two, but never to be shown again. <laughs> but to make a long story short, TLDR, uh, I was like, they just invented a sister for Lois Lane, and Jacob was telling me she is actually in the comics. So I will. Yeah. I, I was going to bring that up because when I I thought the same thing too when they were going to show Lois. Lois's sister when they were airing it on, on WB and I didn't know that she had a sister until I had to do my research. I was like, oh yeah, so they're bringing in a, a comic book character that has more relations to Lois Lane. Makes sense. I think there is good ideas here, but um, this was not I super think, great. Jay. The execution like, just was so ridiculous of Lucy's motivation turning into a perfect girl, the perfect daughter, and just want to be a rebellious to becoming a con artist and sets up this whole stupid of ransom and, and putting Lois into the crossfire. How stupid was that? Really? Kind of gave up the ghost with what uh, what Lucy's motives really were with the whole skiing scene, and and it was like the skiing like scene. The like that that part, I mean, that part made like no the sense. The if they were trying to do this plot twist that she is like they're technically working together in this whole chase, how did that make any sense? Like that that just felt like a little bit of a plot hole. Miller and Goff must have just watched Triple X for the first time and seen that seen the the part where uh, where Xander rides down the mountain and all the snow falls with him. He's like nothing like fresh powder. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I do like it when we get to uh, when we get to the Kent farm and uh, like literally Lois is making food and the shit the food looks like shit. Yeah, yeah in the shittiest way possible. She did a shitty job of ba like baking pancakes that just felt like someone just like ripped it in half and didn't even proper slice it. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm that just saying, pancakes are a pretty easy food to make. Like they literally make pancake mix. This should be idiot proof. <laughs> they, but I'm sure that the can't make it homemade. They're I mean, did she like look up for pancakes for dummies? <laughs> also, have you noticed that Lois, have you noticed that like Clark gives that pun. I love the pun that Clark says. He says, "If you were any kinder, we'd starve." Yeah, I love that. She like that he calls her out on her bullshit. It's like, hey, you want something? If you were any nicer, we'd starve. Like you know, you you literally two know each other too well. That's just <laughs> that's they play so on like brother silly. and sister, and I love that. You know, even though it's kind of creepy because later on they it is kind of yeah because we know later they the do comics, end up together you know, they at, at some point. They do become but, but also, I do like that. I do like also that, um, you know, like later on, I thought it was funny because like Clark's just giving her a hard time. She punches Clark in the arm. Her, she should be going, ah! No, I agree. I was going to bring that up too when she was just like, it looked like she was punching him very hard and that should have broke her hand. <laughs> punching a concrete wall. No, it's like punching a steel. You're literally like punching a steel. He's only called the man of steel. So. For a reason. He's the man of steel for a reason, bro. Yeah. You know what I also liked? I really like Clark and Lex finally go back to the talent. It felt like since we haven't really seen them at the talent since like season three. You know, yeah. like it's mostly like they, I feel like, did they get rid of the set or something? Because we have not seen them at the Talon, like Clark and Lex together. It felt like something you would see in season one. This episode very much reminds me of a season one or two episode. It doesn't really remind me of a season four because they haven't really done a storyline like this since like I we think just haven't we just two. haven't seen them together in the Talon for for like like long period of time. Like you know, because right now it felt doesn't it feel like the writers? It felt like they brought in old writers to write this episode because. Clark and Lex have not really been, they've been at odds lately, you know, now like they're all of a sudden they're teaming up and like, you're like a brother to me, Clark and everything. And I'm just like, have you like, have they not keeping up with the lore right now? Because it feels like they have not paid attention to the lore of the last couple of episodes. Because like last time we seen Lex and Clark, Clark, Lex was like, you know, like, hey, you know, we're friends, but, you know, he says, I can never trust you, you know? And so oh, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, they were at odds, and suddenly they're best buds and teaming up, doing this yeah. whole 
yeah, doing this the whole stakeout episode, thing. So they go back to like you know, then they go back to like the fucking square. It just one. it just act like nothing happened. It act like nothing happened between the two of them. It's like yeah, you know, I feel like I feel like they're try. I feel like they tried to set this episode of them as buddies again, so Onyx can happen. Yeah, that that might be the case. Because I just feel like it just feels off, like because you know, the last couple of episodes, Lex and Clark have been like, "Stay out of my way, Lex," and Clark's like. I, I mean, really yeah, they—they're still friends, but they're just not like they're not on a trust. They're not as close as they used to be. Yeah, they're just not very close. But it almost seems like like he's just like keeping them like keep your enemies close kind of type of th- thing. Like keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. Oh yeah, I agree with that. Also, did you like that uh, Lex uh, J- uh, Ryan? What do you think about Jason going in there threatening Lionel? Uh, I thought that was interesting. You know, I um, it it was really interesting because like they're giving Jason things to do, which I do appreciate. And uh, there's a part of me that's like, I don't know. I don't know if Lionel is like being exactly what he says he is, but I like what they're doing with the is he isn't he is he isn't he and like they they're not- they like to play the suspense like they're keeping us the, as viewers guessing like is Lionel is, is what he says he is or is the real Lionel is still in there and he has an agenda. Yeah, and, and so it just boils down to. Right in this moment, Lionel is saying that, oh, I'm a changed man, but based on past actions, it's a completely different story. So it's just, you got to look at it and go, okay, we need to see action first. Like words are one thing, but it's like, like talk is cheap, but action really pays the bills. Also, I, th- I like that he just grabs Lionel and throws him up against there. And then like Lana's there, she sees him like Jason and... Yeah, what honestly, what was Lana? What was Lana doing in the mansion? What was she doing following really Jason? Sense. Also, where was Lionel's security, like Lex's security team? Because shouldn't like when they're they see an here an altercation, they be running in there and like put the gun up to Jason's yeah, face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Luke. yeah, but also, what was Lana doing there too? Because because we remember at the end, like towards the end of the episode, she still has that stone. So that it clear it clarifies that she staged a break in to test uh, Jason. That was on purpose. It feels like Lana cannot keep a man to save her life because last episode, last uh, boyfriend, he was a psychopath, a junkie user that hired to keep tabs on Clark. And then this one is hired to keep tabs. Or was it hired? Who was it hired to keep tabs on Clark? Or Yeah, it was Clark, right? I believe so. Yeah. And Adam uh, was hired to keep tabs on Clark from Lionel. And then this one is like, you know, and then now this one is like up to no good. You're just like, Lana cannot keep a man <laughs> to save her life. No. I once again divert to uh, what Matt brought up a couple episodes ago, the Helen of Troy situation. Exactly. I mean, seriously, and especially, it's still a three, it feels like out of, all, out of all the three people that are in love with her, Clark is the only one this uh, the, in these three episodes had, that has not made an advance towards her in a way. No, he's been more distance. He's yeah. been more distance from, like from Lex, Lana lately. You have Lex and Onyx hitting on her. Then you have it Jason. just seems like it just seems like that Lex and Jason are at odds with one another with the same woman, but also with the stones as well. Yeah, it's like they both want they know Lana's the key to the stone, so they're like mm-hmm. Lana. Like, you know, I will say that um, you know, like I do like that we're finally getting to figure out the mystery of Jason. Mm-hmm. I'm sure yeah. Ryan has been wanting to know like what's up with Jason, what is up with Jason. You know, there's not it's not just gonna be hey guys. It seems like that the more we get to know Jason, the more we start to see who he truly is. That he's not as what he, what he seems to be. He starts off we meaning that he's a nice, good going guy. He, he's a good football coach, a good mentor to Clark. But then we see a different side of him that he We're has a lot of skeletons. In the wall. He has he has a lot of skeletons in the closet. There's a lot more to this character than they've been letting on, but it's been a slow build, and I do like that. But you know what gave me the idea? I think that that's the reason why that Jensen was hired on to do Supernatural because it fits that type of role of going on this ex- expedition, like hunting that type of thing, the supernatural elements. Jason, I do like the fact that we're getting like to see more of Jason's reveal, and Ryan's putting chapstick on right now, so just like for the <laughs> behind the scenes audience. <laughs> Ryan's putting his, <laughs> like he's just going, he's just going put on this, his, right? just put on a little bit of a lip gloss on <laughs> like, <laughs> the moment you bring up Jason like mm. I, have, I have dry lips guys what do you want <laughs> just gotta <laughs> lube that up he's like Dre, Jason he's like ooh Jason ooh. Uh, he's like stop Buffalo Bill and Silence of the Lambs you like, have careless like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
He's gonna be like, be like Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. He's gonna put that lipstick on with playing goodbye. He, or he's like, or he's like Cable that, <laughs> or he's like Cable from Deadpool too when he puts on that fucking lipstick. <laughs> the 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 then Deadpool just fucking calls him out in a sexual way. Uh, but, but yeah, I'm pretty small. Uh, but yeah, I I do I do also like that Lucy was robbing the talent and Clark catching her. I thought that was pretty cool. Like, cause Clark, I was thinking if he let, if if she walks out of that room. Like and then Clark is sleeping in the thing. I'm like, Clark's a fucking terrible. He's not even. I was like, this dude has super hearing. Because remember, I got mad. Wasn't he faking dog? it? Wasn't Clark faking sleeping? Because it didn't look it like he was sleeping. Him. He literally was faking it. And I clear. And it was clear of. It was clearly obvious that Lucy was staging the whole robbery of the fucking talent to play a whole innocent act, giving him a little self petty so that he would go to Lex for the money. It was all staged from according to Clark later on in the episode. Also, they find out what the who the loan shark is based off of a description from Clark. They have his whole name, his address, all that shit. Well, he was able to dig in the archives. Well, he was able to dig up his fucking records. And you don't at even the know his name. School. You just know what he looks like. Hey, it was a guy with black hair and a, like a pointyish nose and like a like a shaped jaw. Yeah, they never even that mentioned could be the fucking name. Anybody. She, Lucy never mentioned that guy's name, so somehow that she was able to get a description and get the right guy. And suddenly, presto. I'm like, I, I did want to. Uh, I did want to shout out the actress who played Lucy, uh, Peyton List, who is uh, a there's pretty two big Peyton fan. List that work in Hollywood. There's yeah. the girl from Cobra Kai, and then there's the other Peyton List, who was also Poison Ivy in Gotham. I was just gonna get to that. Yes, yeah, she was Poison Ivy in uh, Gotham. She's been in a lot of TV, like a lot of it. Oh she yeah, and she was flag. also in another CW show. Wow. That was during the Arrowverse called The Tomorrow People that only ran for one season. That Robbie yeah. that uh, Stephen Amell's cousin was in. I thought she, I thought that wasn't part of the Arrow. I never watched it. Oh no, it was not part of the Arrowverse. It was just around the time the Arrowverse was still yes. going on. It was like played, uh like 10 years ago. She played on The Flash as Captain Cold's sister. Oh, she was. Yeah, she was in The Flash. The I remember. Glider. Go watch all uh, of you watch, the episodes are on YouTube or if like, you know, the you have clips. Go watch her on Gotham. Her scenes as Poison Ivy, I think she's the best Poison Ivy. There's three different actors that play Poison Ivy, like child Poison Ivy, and there's teenage Poison Ivy, and then there's adult Poison She plays adult Poison Ivy. And she is so good as adult Poison Ivy because you feel like she's evil, she's sexy, she's fierce. And I'm like, she's so good in that role. And I'm like, every time I see her on Smallville, I'm like, that's Poison Ivy because she did such a good job. I'm like, seriously? I'm just saying she's such a good actress, and I really like her. Let's talk about Martin Becker, who is just a complete idiot. Number one, he steals a cop car. Number one, how did he pull this off in Smallville, a very small town? With a sheriff that's like like literally like Texas Ranger, Chuck Norris, goes, oh, he says, Mr. Kent, and I guarantee you she's figuring out a way. I wonder how the Kents are involved in this. I swear, I wonder how the Kents are involved in this. See, Sheriff Adams has her priorities in order, but uh, but then the dude is like, "I will hold you for fifty million better bonds," and I will hold you fifty better bonds. Oh. And then he gives him a sandwich and says, "Oh, by the way, they said the sandwich the, that one has tomatoes. The one that one has no right. tomatoes. The stickers I'm has like, no what? tomatoes." And then Why Lois was able to put two and two together. Like, how did he know you don't didn't like tomatoes? <laughs> Busted. Like, he, was a, he was so stupid. Like, you just literally gave away the fucking secret, you idiot. Like, when, because when there's I, no tomatoes. He knows Lucy doesn't like any tomatoes. Like, oh, yeah, but the one without the, the one with the sticker is no tomatoes. And I was like, what? <laughs> when, that happened, when that happened, I face palmed so hard that I felt like I went to the other astral plane like Doctor Strange and I came back into my body and I was looking at bald Tilda Swinton I was like teach me like that's how hard that went you're supposed to be the mastermind and you're not that bright and I don't think that he's the mastermind I think Lucy's the mastermind he's just a pawn <laughs> but the, the way he was talking reminded me of a cartoon character he's like yes get on the ground and I'm just like oh my god like seriously what he the is so was over, that was so over the top we've so seen him talk He's been an X Men too. It was William Stryker's right hand man. I remember, yeah. He's literally yeah. been in uh, Halloween Town as Calabar's father. Or Cal Halloween Town too. Sorry, his fake, fa Town his fake is, father, is the, the frog. frog man. The frog yeah, man. we've seen him act. We know he's selling. He's a British accent in real life. We know he can act. It almost sounds like he tries to pull out the Russian accent, and it was not that good. It's a terrible. I would have said, it's hey, a can we go Russian. again? 
Can we go again? Do that drop, dude. Drop. Go with a British accent, man. You sound great as with a British. Harrison Ford's Russian accent in K nineteen, The Widowmaker, was better than this. Yes, get on the ground. You are now. Yes, I am going get to the get ground. on the ground. Get on the ground. No. I want the fifty million dollar. No. Honestly, like, Schwarzenegger would have been a much better fit for that. But you I, all, I, dude, ima- can you just imagine if he was in it? But even though he never does TV, I guess he uh, was busy being the governor or something uh, or other. Also, <laughs> give it to California. Clark randomly finds legs. He knocks Lex out, steals the car, and drives away. And Clark, after he goes to the fake location. Finds Lex and Le- randomly at a, at a freaking metropolis. Finds Lex. He just finds him. And I'm just like, how where, does Clark have like a, does Lex have GPS up his ass or something? Well, he did have the GPS on that briefcase. Oh, that's fair. Okay. I, I'll yeah. He, that. Like, I will bring that up. I will be fair. That, to be fair, there was a GPS in that, um, in that briefcase that, that, um, Lex had put a, a trace on. So that he could take the briefcase and track him down, track down but, that loan shark. No, I, I would rather believe that Lex has an ass tracker on Clark has an ass tracker on Lex, where he just like <laughs> he played up X's ass, and he's like, "Don't worry, at super speed." So I put it up there. He has no idea. And Clark's it's like, "My ass is hurt." He just no, he just super speeds so fast that he could be gone before he even knows it. He'll be like, "I don't know about you, but my asshole is killing me." <laughs> He's like, it's ass tracker. He said, my ass tracker on Lex. <laughs> and then he's like, ass tracker, there it is. And he's like, and then all of a sudden, Lex is on the ground. He's like, oh my ass. And the, ah! and the, and the, the, the one like, I brought up, Kevin. like, that was a, that was a quote from Hollow Man by Kevin Bacon when he made up that Superman joke. <laughs> that that kind of reminds me of Kevin James. He did this stand up special and he talked about this cheap underwear that he bought that is like, you take three steps outside and it's like having a twisted hammock in between your legs. <laughs> and you have to like 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 pick it out the crack but subtly be like hey look there's macy's over there and you have to like <laughs> like duck and do the thing like i imagine like lex like having that up there and be like hey is that wetzel's pretzels like what's that over there you know just like try to clear it out um, I, I will say I, I did like how lex takes over dealing with the loan shark and everything and like how he's calling the shots like my team will do this and everything and all that. And I like how Lois is trying to be a mother to Lucy because obviously their mother died years ago. Yeah. And so they're basically Lois is trying to be that mother figure to Lucy because usually Lois is kind of like the feisty one. But then this one's like Lois is becoming that mo- mater- maternal figure to Lucy. Cause yeah, because she literally had to raise Lucy while, while their mom died, passed away. She died of cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Because the dad was not really around because he's usually doing his own duty. Yeah, but the dad being away thing, that's like just like one of the laziest like story things like ever. I was just half expecting to be like T2 would be like, you're not my real dad, Todd, or something dumb. Like She's that. not my mother, Todd. Or, yes, yeah. that's the line. Thank you. Also, I love that shot of Clark jumping on the truck. That was a cool sequence. I will that he's super lead on the top of the truck. over the truck. You get to see him like. I don't know if it's a stuntman. I'm sure it's a stuntman. Climb on that top of that and truck. It almost looked, it didn't even look like a stuntman. It literally looked like Tom Welling did his own stunts in that truck. That, that was that a truck. really cool sequence. I thought that, that was, was That was, and it was done practical. It was not like done on like green, or at least it was probably done on green screen. And they probably it's did probably a great like job. like on the, the truck was probably on like a harness or something. Mm-hmm. And the, they'll pretend like, you know, like forced perspective to make it look like it's going when really it's on a wheel, it's on like a crane or something. Yeah, like, yeah, that, that might be it. And which I was probably what it was. I mean, we'll find out. I'm sure on talk though they'll probably explain what that how it was shot. Um, I also like how um, um, like Lex's line, "Just because you have blood in, running through your veins doesn't mean make you family." I that oh was no, I cool. love that part. I love that scene with Lex saying that. That's Just because your blood doesn't make you family, my dad needed an heir. Your parents chose you out of love. I would trade that for anything for any best, day. Best part of the episode by a lot. I like That's Lex the and Clark in the barn. I thought Lex Clark in the barn was so good, especially Lex and Lionel when they're at, at, at the at the at the end. How Lex and Lionel, especially how Lex tells Lion, Lionel tells Lex about Jason having the stone, and Je- Lex is just makes this face like, <gasps> like he's so dumbfounded he did not know, and like Lionel really truly believed, like, yep, you did not know, Lex, he, <laughs> because he was just like this. He had the stone. Like that, that that face, you know, that Lex made. I'm like, yeah, he did, he really did not know that Lex that Jason had the stone. I'm like, yeah. So I thought that was pretty good. And um, yeah, I, the, the only thing I thought was stupid at the end of the episode was the bad guy. All right, so Clark randomly. All right, so the Lex's security. Le, Lucy gets in the car and drives away, with, and her security just lets her go. 
<laughs> like literally her as her as security when we see the last time we see her they're putting her in an suv and then all of a sudden next shot is she's getting into lex's car and driving away saying and she stops real quick and goes saying i'm sorry mouthing and then drives away and i'm like nobody could have said get out of the car stop her or nothing just say like oh shit there she goes there she goes again <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's that, that's what i thought of the episode but uh, yeah let's go to uh ratings jacob one to ten what do you have i'll give it a six out of ten all right matt what about you same here i'm gonna give it a six not not bad it just didn't really care for it uh looks like we are simpatico i'm going to go six as well uh not like bad <laughs> there's some good moments but i feel like 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 it's weird because it's like spirit is awful the next episode we're going to be talking about onyx is phenomenal and this is like this is like the prelude of uh it's just kind of there like like it's like it's got some interesting ideas and it's like moving some stuff forward but overall it's just it's the appetizer for the main course and speaking of main courses let's just get into it right now it is season four episode 17 called onyx <laughs> I'm gonna stop it now. You're gonna join me. Smallville. Now Thursday, 8, 7 Central. While performing an experiment with heated kryptonite, the so-called black kryptonite, at Luther Corps' facility, the laboratory blows, and the dark side of Lex Luther is separated from him. The mean Lex controls and imprisons the good one in a room wearing an iron mask like in Alexander Dumas' novel and spread evil among Lana, Clark, Chloe, and Lionel Luther. So, yeah, we get about as close to, like, the Lex Luther that has, like, been known in the comics and all that pretty much in this episode. And this is not just the best of the three, but one of the best of the season. Jacob, what did you think? I uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed this episode, okay? Um, this episode, I, I like... I like how it starts, but then it just reminds me, the opening reminds me of the Ang Lee Hulk movie of like when Eric Bana goes, when Eric Bana jumps over and he's like morphing into three different like morphs. Like when Lex, that shot of Lex getting like, oh, 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 oh just like, <laughs> it looked like somebody paused Michael Rosenbaum and then an editing went like this with like hit with a computer and went, oh, like just like, just like, it is like a cardboard cut out of him when someone like freeze frame and go, like, oh. which i thought it looked dope i thought that sequence i thought was that was cool. so dumb that see i'm like couldn't they just do this instead where it's like he gets zapped and, goes, ah! and then it goes down and all of a sudden you see like other and the other legs right next to him but then the other legs gets up it's that they never even explain where the other legs he just like zorped out of him then he went and ran away he's like all right mike make a pose all right make another one all right one more all right, we'll just cobble it together in editing. You're good. Like, <laughs> there's a part of me though that I feel like they kind of gave up the ghost with revealing that is like this is the evil Lex and the evil Lex and the good Lex are gonna fight it out. Like when there were two Lexes, like like the one kind of poked out from behind the box. Like what just happened there? And then the good Lex is like, "Hey, dude, come on, let's get you to a hospital." I I don't know. Maybe I'm looking too deep into it, but just I I feel like it would have been more shocking if. Like, you, like, take the doctor to the hospital, and then he kills the doctor and be like, what just happened? I, I feel like that would have been more shocking, I guess. Uh, Yeah, but, like, I just can't believe it. I found that was hard to believe. Like, you know, the doctor goes, he goes in there and kills somebody. I did like that there are things that Evil Lex does in this episode. Like, I love, like, how he's, like, I like how nice Lex is being and everything, and he also just sp sponsor Lionel's event and everything, and how Lex yeah, the sponsor of that charity Clark. event that Lionel wanted to do. Yeah. And, but then, of course, the man in the Iron Mask reference, how, like, you know, the evil, if you ever read Iron the Mask or seen the Leonardo DiCaprio film, how, like, you have an asshole, like, son that's evil, and then you have the good one, and they were trying to swap them out. Yeah, because so, the because the, the good one got locked away, got held in and, and hit his a, a true identity, while the evil brother just takes on the throne as a king. 
I like how he just takes over, like he takes over and all of a sudden he's like a badass now and everything where he's like, like he's in there dueling and all of a sudden he slaps the girl on the ass as he's like this. And like he's, he's all about like, like, he's all about doing everything out of impulse without any care in the world. And yeah, that yeah. was such an, an interesting to see this evil Lex Luthor just embracing the darker side of himself. And I love that. That's how that was a big step up for Michael Rosemont's performance. Like it just really just gives us a little bit of a, a taste for what Wex will be one day. If Lionel's face could talk, it'd be like, yep, that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fencing one when he just like scratched his face with a sword. <laughs> yeah, that scene was so good. Really, this is like, I mean, we praise Michael Rosenbaum quite a bit on this show. So that's like nothing. Right. Rightfully so. I mean, yes, I'm I'm coming to a point of that, but this is like some of his finest stuff right here. Like, like just not only does he have to play like two versions of himself, but you just see like the side where he's like, okay, you can definitely see like he's trying to be a better version of himself. And then on the other hand, like you see the pure evil version of himself. They're like, oh, well, that's what we have to look forward to, I guess. I'm not mm-hmm. looking forward to that. <laughs> I kind of like like that how... Oh man, it, it was just so different that we haven't seen Lex a side of Lex that we haven't seen before and it takes Clark by surprise. That like you're not the real Lex. Like, yeah, he is actually. He's just the other half of him that you have not seen before. Yeah, it, it's like it, it's the concept of like in movies and TV of like a character having like two sides of them has been explored like quite a lot. Like I'll just it's a random reference, but the movie Black Swan from Darren Aronofsky, that's one that comes to my mind. But, uh, but I thought it was well done here. The scene where he, like, goes to Lana's apartment and, like, forces himself on her. I'm like, well, oh, no, that Lana, was that, that was, was a little crossing the line right there. I like, like when he goes, my bad. You want me to leave? I'm like, what is this Lex? Like, he thinks he's so cool. Like, my bad? Number one, that would never fly today. And number two, that is, like, it's, like, so gross. And then, and then, like, Next time you see Lana, she's in the barn. Is like, yeah, I'm okay. No, I'm not. It just that whole scene it was just like it's subtle, but they could have gone over the top with it, but they didn't. And I thought it yeah. worked. Yeah, like Lex, really, like Lex, really is like in this episode. He's so like out there and everything, and so you're just like, what is he in this episode? Like, what is he doing and everything? And I think that's what's really, you know, what great about him and everything is that how, I also like how like Lionel defensing and he's like, there's my real father. Like, yeah, he's trying to get it. Lionel. He's trying to get it out of him. That's what he was trying to do. He and thinks like, he's just Lionel, playing the whole act. This whole, yeah. this whole goody two shoe here. Like yeah, Lionel really nice is like, it's nice like there's my season one where they had their first duel. And now it's, it's like the roles have almost reversed almost. Lionel's like, hey, I changed. We changed. And it's like, no, they just get soft like you. I was like, damn, dude. <laughs> that, was, that was an all-timer right there. Really, some of like Lex's best lines are in this. Like Jacob pointed it out to me, like, wait to the scene in the barn. And I'm like, okay, we're in the barn now. And he's like, when Lex is like his gun pointed to like to to Martha, shoots Jonathan, and she's like, What do you want? And like, I want the world. And I'm like, that's so good what do you want the world mrs kent and your son's gonna help me bring it to its knees <laughs> like that i am the villain of the story i can see what they're doing what he's doing i can see it i feel it i can i can he's cooking I love like that. no the barn is literally the best scene of the entire episode because like I am oh the my god of the story yeah, but the one thing that a little bit upset me and it bothered me, like, then he just walk out of the barn and let them go to the hospital? Like, that's <laughs> like, it? Off screen? That, like, it? what? Like, <laughs> that's it? That's really? I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with this? Did he just suddenly, scene? just after he says that line, at his bad guy monologue, and he just, and then it just cuts All off right, I said my lines. I'm out. Peace. <laughs> like, peace. Go, go to the hospital. Get treated. <laughs> I am the I'll villain. I'll kill you later. Now I am going to leave <laughs> as you reflect on that. But also, I just love the fact that that, that, that Alex was able to know thoughts. his secret and knows his weakness, and now he has power over him whenever he wants to, and that makes him even more dangerous. Yeah, yeah, I could kill you right now, but I kind of need you, so I'm gonna go. He wants to use him to conquer the world. You know where I live, Clark. Come visit me. 
You know where I live. Come visit me, pal. <laughs> I'm go, to the ho- go to the hospital. Take him to the hospital <laughs> after I just shot him. <laughs> I mean, also, I also liked how he said, where's Lex at? I can't put him nearby. I didn't know what would happen in case. And also, I wanted in case I feel like torturing something when I'm a little blue. I'm just like <laughs> well that was that was so sadistic that was like damn dude you're a <laughs> sadistic little blue. bastard <laughs> also i really liked how um I, I also like how like lionel goes back to being a businessman because i was kind of like i don't like when lionel's not a businessman one thing i've got to bring up you if you have noticed that quote that he gave the clark when they were about to go duking it out in the third act when where, where he kicked the, the the other half of Lex, it's like I want you to remember Clark, the one man you beat. Dude, you he literally that's I, a I didn't notice it until I watched it many more times and I put two and two together. He literally just like like so, say the same similar line from the Dark Knight Returns that Batman said to Superman after he beats him into the fight. In your most private moments, I want you to remember that I was the one who beat you. I want you to remember this day, Clark. I want you to remember that despite all your amazing powers, there was one man that beat you. In all the years to come in your most private moments, I want you to remember the one man who beat you. My hand at your throat. (laughs) And then he dies of a heart attack. (laughs) (laughs) Or he faked his heart attack. He faked his heart attack. That would have been funny if Evil Lex would just faked a heart attack. (laughs) They'd be like, well, that's like Dark (laughs) I mean... (laughs) Um, that would have been funny. Um, I, I will say I did Bro, like the Clark. things I had issues with was Lex. Lex, okay, basically, how does evil Lex? Or that would have been funny. Like, oh, oh crap! I said too much. <laughs> oh, I said too soon. It would have been funny if evil. How would how does evil Lex is able to abduct Lex and hide him in the mansion without? Wouldn't it have been easier to kidnap him at the lab because he has a security team and all that. Also, nobody discovers good Lex down in the basement in the wine cellar. He has maids. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, like, mm. like there are other people in this house, and I know that like Luther Manor is like has like the as like the security of like a Ziploc bag, but I'm just sitting there like someone's gonna find this guy eventually, right? <laughs> I, I just There's gonna be like... someone who's gonna find me. <laughs> also, doesn't it feel like it nods to Tim Burton when he puts him in the Iron Mask and walks up the stairs? Doesn't it? Don't you get Batman '89 feels whenever the Joker like is in the you know getting the surgeon? And he's taken off the blindfold and everything, mm-hmm. and he starts laughing. He busts the light. Then you see the Joker in a far distance go climb, walk up the stairs as the doctor's standing there, like in scared. Like, didn't yeah. it feel like that? Because you see Lex go up the stair, evil Lex go up the stairs. And it, it almost shot exactly like that scene in Batman 89 when the Joker, after he busts the mirror, you yeah. know, and he starts laughing. Right, right, his, yeah. I remember the that. The thing that was missing was Rosenbaum asking for a mirror, like, mirror! <laughs> <laughs> mirror, mirror! <laughs> you know? Uh, which, um, also, yeah, if Lex, if, if Lex is good, shouldn't he have no anger? Like, literally, he screams, goes, ah! You know, and everything. I'm like, how? You should have no emotions. Because it, it like Evil X took all your anger and hate away from you. So why? How are you angry? I mean, it yeah, would, that's a good. That's a good point. I mean, well, but I just think he was more like the good conscience of Lex, and this is the bad, the evil conscience of him. Also, if Lex is also if Clark is dumb because they find out there's two Lexes, and he goes straight to Luther Mansion and, and gives the information. Shouldn't he try to be more leery about it and say, "Hey, Lex, what did we talk about when I was at the lab or something? You know, hey, what do we do this instead? He's just like Lex. I need to tell you this what happened." Well, he did give him the, the question, like, what did we talk about? Just to make sure that it's not the wrong the Lex that he's talking to. But also the, the, the downside is that the other Lex eavesdropped in their conversation. So he got the upper hand, <laughs> gave him the advantage to fool him. Also, Chloe and Clark had enough time to get out of the way. Like when they dropped that, there's like, they see it. And then all of a sudden they jump on the ground. I'm like, you get out of the way, guys. Come on, get out of the way. Instead, it's just like. Eh. It took them a long time to move. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's just the roof falling on you. You are smart. Like it's Clark, so like, cliche. Oh, it's like I hate when that happens. Like, do you not know when to move when you have to? It's common sense. <laughs> yeah. Also, I also thought was stupid. I really thought was stupid. Is that he hits the meteorite and it hits it zaps them both to back together. It yeah, because he you, yeah, he uses this heat vision to superheat the fucking green kryptonite to turn to black. The same thing that happened in the beginning of the episode when they're using a laser beam to heat up the the kryptonite and it turned black and that's what zapped Lex and split them in half. I mean, that's my only guess that that's how they're trying to find a way to reverse the effect is doing the same thing. 
He said, be careful, like he says, because next thing someone's going to get hurt. And then he shoots Jonathan in the leg. He's like, he, your son's going to bring him to his knees. Now talk some sense to him if something urgent, if something bad happens. Like that. <laughs> I was, I wish Jonathan would have said, like, I knew you were scum all along. But, dude, it would have been so cool if they were to stretch out that Dark Lex storyline if they did, like, a three-part arc. Kind of like the style, like, Green Ranger, Evil Green Ranger episodes that they stretch out, like, five episodes. I wish they would have done it like at least two or two, at least two more episodes, but it got resolved a lot quicker. I'm, uh, the director, they said on the director's commentary that evil Lana was going to have the Isabel Lana. They thought about like, because it's supposed to end with Lana still being in Isabel's body. Mm hmm. So no, I know. I know. I did not hear about that in the commentary. I didn't watch the commentary of the episode. They said that they were going to keep Isabel as Lana. Oh, really? And I didn't know that they were planning on the doing finale, that. But they feel like they didn't want to revisit that storyline, even though they fucking revisited that story. Yeah, they did it like like at least twice. It's literally like, you know, you got Lex v. Lionel. I mean, you got Lex. Like, Lionel, I like at the end how Lionel, because Lex is trying to redeem him. Like, even Lana kind of won't forgive him. It feels like, uh, it feels like uh, what happened whenever Clark went Red K. Like, y'all remember when Clark went Red K? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels like that, you know. Like I, y'all, I don't know if y'all remember that. Clark yeah, yeah. Red K. Yeah, I just feel like that's where it went, you know. And so I was like, that's what it kind of reminded me of. Yeah, showing your darker self. Yeah, like, so kind of like the Red was, K. But yeah, I mean, that's what it felt like because he likes just like going around apologizing to Lana, and he apologized to his father, but his father's like, "It's okay, you taught me a lesson. We're Luther's son. We're Luther's." And you know, and that's how it ends. I'm like, that's such a good episode. I'm that like, was a good. That was a good quote from Lionel. Like, a man can't deny his true nature, can it, Lex? We're Luthers. Who? And you see at the end, the moment he walks away, you see Lex's face. It's you can tell he's grinning, like he was a little relieved that he's back to being Lionel again. I was like, I did something right. My other half did something right. Yeah, that's when you know that's the real Lex, because he's been asking himself, like, hey, what, what this, um, this black meteor rock created an evil lex or was that was inside me all along he questions that all the time and by the time the end of the episode yeah that answers your question well, um on that note i think we've covered just about everything i can safely say this is one of the best episodes of the whole season no i would argue the next episode the best episode in the next season you're don't, full of shit jake you're full of don't, shit <laughs> don't you start don't you but, uh, start you bastard <laughs> jacob one to ten what do you have this is like, I would say a 9.5 out of 10. All right, Jake, or er, er, Matt, what about you? Dude, this was like near perfect. My favorite episode of the season when I've been, what we've been saying all along. Like, yeah, this is the best. It's, yeah, it's definitely a 9.5 out of 10. I, the, this is the episode I like, I watch countless times for this season more than others. Yeah, we are simpatico. I'm going 9.5 as well. This episode was just, this was a breath of fresh air. It really was so well done. It was so well handled. I, love pretty much everything about it but uh it almost seems like that the writers are like hey let's give the fans a little taste of some of them that have been waiting to see the real lex luther for a long time and give them a little bit of a arch rival rivalry in one episode between clark and lex yeah but uh we uh we now go from uh from the penthouse to the outhouse as the old saying goes it is season four episode 18 called spirit Hi, this is Tom Welling. You're watching Smallwood on the WB Wednesday night. Killing me. How can you call me without a body snatching hand? Smallville, Wednesday night central. It's almost graduation. Yay. And that means it's time for the prom. Yay. After a car accident, a meteor infected student in the run for prom queen Yay. starts Yay. body swapping. Yay. <laughs> Meanwhile, a dead body is found on Lex's mansion grounds. So yeah, this this episode was not the worst, but it just had one big problem. It was just, it was like just Too cringe comedic. from. It was like Mean Girls with body swap. Worse, yeah, and a little bit of Carrie, the one that she almost torched the whole goddamn school. I don't know, have you noticed like at the beginning? I love at the beginning of the episode how like you see like it's Chloe, which I'm sure Ryan was like. I'm sure this is not really Chloe. I'm sure Ryan was like, I'm sure this is not really Chloe. <laughs> because Chloe would never <laughs> do this. Well, I like how at the beginning, like, like she takes an axe and goes, Jack Nicholson. Yeah, they do like a, a day. Yeah, they do like a day flash forward. And, yeah. and, and, and 
you you're wondering like yeah there's no way that chloe could do any of that See, that doesn't seem right then they after the intro it cuts to a they're day all earlier gonna laugh at you, Carrie. they're all gonna laugh at you <laughs> it like, just reminded me of that scene when everybody's like laughing at don i'm like i just think i thought about carrie i was like they're all gonna laugh at you when the mom says they're all gonna laugh at you and that's the like, one and the principal is even laughing and everything <laughs> just like uh, but yeah, I just thought, I really thought though, at the beginning, whenever like you and me, Lifehouse is playing. Yeah, they got a Lifehouse playing at the that prom, which Lex, which Lex arranged it. So thank God they acknowledged that. I was like, wait, how can they afford to get Lifehouse to perform at a high school prom? I guess the billionaire playboy Lex Luthor can arrange that. No, that that ending was honestly... That like, ending is so good. The ending It was the so best good. part of the episode out of that shit. It feels like Clark earned his save. Like, it feels like has like you earn this, Clark. You get to you get to be like with the woman you want and dance with it. And it's parallels to what Clark did. It says, "And I love the people, and I don't know why." Like it's like Clark said, it's like what Superman stands for. He loves the people. You know, and it's like I just thought like this is they're singing to you, Clark, because they're like they're describing you. You love the people. Yeah, you know? that's, yeah, the, that's a good point. The, I love that scene. Clark and Clark and Lana's whole relationship could best be described as like what Robin Williams described as people playing footsie, like, will you blow me? <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, look, I, I got a funny story about I got a funny story about footsie <laughs> that I'm not going to tell you guys on camera. Does it have to? It, was that in the stand up special that Robin Williams did years ago? It was, it was his last one. Yeah. It was, I, that's what I thought of what you were talking about. Like, what? <laughs> I got a funny that, footsie that's story. That's the I'm best way to describe camera. it. It was like, oh, will you? Maybe. For like four seasons. Maybe. Seat. Blow me. <laughs> Just remind me after the stream that asked me about the footsie story at high school. I got a funny story to tell you guys off camera. I'm not telling you on camera. Fuck no, I'm not telling that story on camera. But I got a funny story on off camera about that. <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, I really like that though. They're dancing, and by the way, I hope you put the clip in of like you and me playing with them dancing. That is yeah, such a good course. moment. And I like how Jason J- Jason comes in and just gives Clark that dirty look, like motherfucker. I'm gonna deal with you in the next couple of. Episodes. I was like, you piece of shit, Clark. Like he's like, I'm gonna get. Oh, I'm gonna get you, Kent, in a couple. Of yeah, episodes. and then he's gonna yell, Sammy. <laughs> Like he's like Kent, piece of shit. Like, cause she's like smiling, like this, like mm, happy, like because like yeah, dude, she's with someone her own age, dude. She's not with you or Lex. Yeah, you she fucking, actually, you, you he's her creep. age. She has you're way too old for her, bro. It's like yeah, of course she feels comfortable with someone her age rather than a freaking old man. Yeah, to quote the Rock, like she's with someone her own age. You sick freak. <laughs> 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 it's like yeah she's not robbing the cradle not that old but like still i mean just like also i did like i already, there is some things i did like in this episode i i you know i always imagine i used to think for some reason i don't know why for years i used to think that lex was there also and, and he saw this and he was just like i don't know why i thought this i guess it was just wishful thinking but i could have swore lex was in this episode and he saw that too and he left as well and he just walks into the he walks to the limo gets in the car with lionel on the phone and he just tells the driver to drive. Like, I just thought, I don't know why I thought that, but I just thought that for some reason that Lex was there too. And I'm like, it would make no sense. It'd become comedic, I think, after that point. If, like, that would have like, been, oh, that would have been the- weird. That would have been weird. It would have been funny if, like, Lex taps in and Lana says, May I cut in? And then he grabs Clark and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> I would, I, Michael Rezzo would probably did that. And bro, he would have been like, <laughs> like, yeah, that would have been funny. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, I, I did like, I will say, besides that moment, I do like other things. I, I love the car stunt with the song. Like how the girls on the phone, all of a sudden, the song. They're La, playing La, La, Ashley Simpson, Simpson song. You make me want to La, La. After that me. episode, I hate that song. <laughs> I love that episode song. And I like, every time I think of that scene in Smallville, where all of a sudden that car flips. That car, you got to admit, that stunt was cool. Hey, no that texting and driving. Flips. Texting and was, driving. <laughs> that was a great stunt, but Jacob no, was this best. out, and I'll put in like a photo for reference. But you can see the mechanism which the car, like like it, the mechanism that flips. The they car. flip the car. You could tell the, the little mechanism that flips the car. It showed, and I'm just like, yeah. I told Ryan, I'm like, 
you could see the mechanism, Ryan. You could see it. Look, it's right there. Some, and somehow she was able to lay next to the kryptonite. How convenient. That gives her ability to body snatch. <laughs> I mean, if you notice, every fucking thing in the show has to do yeah, with Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's freak All of the, the week, guys. Come on. Another stupid freak of the week. I'm like, what are we doing? Also, she kills her own self. I'm like, if I'm a ghost, I would not want to kill my vessel because what the fuck? Because she doesn't like the way that she looked. Oh, she's all bruised I'm up like, and shit. She hates dude, that. Like, ugh, she, ugh. apparently she's never seen any ghost movies because I'm like, I'm in a coma. Apparently, apparently she's never seen Just Like Heaven. Apparently. Because well, that, that was, we had, well, actually, the movie haven't happened yet until a couple of years later. Yeah, sure. well, actually, a year later, if I because it was 2005 and that movie was like 2006. This, this episode is more like a fucked up episode, of just, a fucked up version of Just Like Heaven with Reese Witherspoon. If you've seen that movie, you've seen it. That's one of my mother's favorite yeah. movies. And it's just like, it. it's like she becomes, if you've seen the movie, Reese Witherspoon gets in a car accident, becomes a ghost, and she's haunting Mark Wahlberg because she's trying to figure out how to get back in her body. Well, this is like that, only much more comedic. <laughs> at least, she, but at least she's not body snatching. She's constantly every time she makes physical contact, she's body snatching someone. Yeah, she touches it. Like she touches Martha Kent. Martha Kent's in the kitchen going, "You make me want to laugh." I will give the Annie T L two O a prop for like, acting like a, a bumble teenage girl. Kent. I would. She did a great job of that performance. Like, oh my god, I can. That, that was a different side of her I've not seen before. In she's in the kitchen listening to Ashley Simpson and then she goes to the talent and calls this other this other girl a hoe. A big fat hoe. A big fat hoe. <laughs> just I'm like, like, what she is doing? a big fat hoe. And, and then she just goes around and schools <laughs> Lana. She touches Lana. Yeah, no, she <laughs> schools <laughs> Lana about the whole Paris dating the football coach. I was like, damn, dude. I was like, Martha Kent is a big old bitch in this episode. What a it's not bitch. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, Annetta too did a great job of selling the bitchiness. She's like, I can be a bitch. Watch. <laughs> but yeah, she she did sell it on that. I did not like when Christina cried. Feels like she was too like like jokey when she did it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't when like she it. She did it. I didn't believe it. But when Annette did it, I'm like, oh, I, this is I bought so it. good. Or Kristen Crook, I bought it too. I, don't, I didn't buy it with Lana. I just the only one who could. I totally did that. buy it. Like, yeah, I can. Yeah, she definitely convinced me that that was style. Um. Styles or whatever her name is. Also, Don should have known Clark Don. would go to wouldn't go to the prom with his mom. <laughs> like, like, why mom, would she you think that that's like, like yeah, mom, let's go to the prom together? Like he would be laughed his ass off if he meets his mother to the prom. <laughs> like it was. I'm like, and what? Like girl, how was Clark? How was Clark not shocked and gross? I was like, oh, mom, no. My mom asked me to the prom. Yeah, I had to bang my mom that night. Oh god, <laughs> like it was so gross. Billy, dude, it's like Kansas they're like, they're like, like, I'm fucking like Bill, like, dude, that like, dude, be like Ted, like, dude, that's your mom. But, hey, the I'm an alien from another planet, called. man. So it's all good. Woo! Shut up, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. I'm an alien from another planet, man. So we all good. The Jonathan people from Alabama. <laughs> Let me tell you about them Kent boys over here. Bam, 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 bam. I'm gonna go downtown. <laughs> he's gonna right. He's gonna go down her fortress of solitude right there. <laughs> he's gonna go back in her barn. <laughs> he's gonna drive his big old tractor in her barn. Oh boy! <laughs> Let's abandon ship. Abandon ship. Abandon. <laughs> um, also, <laughs> the show brings it back the same actor from season two who was an old man when he got kissed. He literally, yeah, that's the same guy, the same actor. He gets electrocuted by a dog. Like, can, oh. can that, the, why does he have to play the type of character that just gets killed? Plays the douchebag and <laughs> this then is gets the third killed. third time he's got like killed or hurt. Yeah, he, this is the third time he's played a character, a different t- character. Like, season dude. one, do you remember in season one when no, he got I attacked don't. by I... the invisible dude? Oh yeah, yeah, beat up in the first one. Then he got he got turned to an old man in the second. He died season. of an old, and then he died yeah. of an old man. <laughs> is, he fu- old- is he like you know? It reminds me, Kenny from South Park. Like, is he fucking Kenny from South Park? Has many lives and dies in every episode. He's the guy that died in Freddy versus Jason by the bed. Like Jason takes. Yeah, he gets pulled up in the fucking bed like a s- sandwich. Well, maybe ask you twice. That's it's- the dude. maybe ask you twice. <laughs> It's almost like they saw him and that were like, we're going to fuck with this guy. Trust me. <laughs> like He can never catch a break. He's like Sean Bean from every time he dies in a movie. <laughs> it's like he must be an asshole to work with or something. <laughs> they probably don't like him very much. <laughs> also, this dude survives the electrocution, by the way, too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he can survive electrocution. Well, it's kind of possible. There are like there are times where people get struck by lightning. You have a 50-50 chance of surviving that shit. 
Also, no one sees the nurse uh, pull the plug on the uh, on the dawn. Like it's no so one... cliche. Every time that that a, a what villain, happened to the, the antagonist that was in there? just just the antagonist goes inside inside the hospital room with the patient, kills him, and gets away with it scot free. Also, she that... doesn't even pull the plug. She kills herself by injecting herself, and I'm like, how would Don know that? She's not that smart. <laughs> it just makes no sense logically. This episode is like, I mean, I I like this episode. But it's like a turn your brain off episode because everything in this, every character does something stupid in this episode. Like you got, and we just gotta, gotta go live, along with it. I mean, like seriously, I will say though, I will say there were some things I do like. I like that the whole Jason Lex thing. I thought was great. Oh yeah, that the whole murder with uh, Bridget Crosby. Now yeah, they now we know that she's Margaret dead. Margaret Kidler, Margaret Kidler's character. Yeah, Margaret Kidler's character. Yeah. Yeah, she gets murdered off screen by uh, by by somebody. By Jason. By, by, it was Jay- by Jason. Well, yeah, yeah, it's revealed at the end of the episode. Jason's the one that killed her. Yep. Because he wanted the stone from her. Yeah, and he and he was able to get that stone from her. The one that she's the one that she got it from the other guy from the prison in the transference episode. Yeah. So. I, I will. I do like that. You know, we we're getting that closure on that. You know, a little bit. I'm sure. So yeah, which I will say, I do like that. Um, I I I do like that we got that. You know, storyline wrapped. But don't up you a think that's bit. weird that they that Genevieve Teague was able to erase her from the archives from her records? How she was able to pull that string to erase her completely? Well, the Luther's got a uh, deck built not to where it is now, but it's not at a point where you could just erase someone like. I mean, how is that possible? I mean, a billionaire possibly? Well, I don't think so. Secret, or did you hire a fucking society. or did you hire someone who can who has the records, who has the archive to have the ability to pull the strings like that? But just I think, don't know. Hey, think of that group. Remember uh, Matt? That group in season seven? I think I know who you're talking about. I'm just saying, yeah. think about that, okay? So she was probably part of that. Yeah, Ryan's I know where like, you're getting at. No, I know. I definitely Ryan's know like, tell about. me! What are you talking about? Tell me! You'll find out in season seven what we're talking about. That, by the way, that this this comes back in season seven. This whole storyline comes back in season seven. Oh, it will. It's definitely gonna it, it will definitely touch back on with the with the family of the Luthers and Swan. With the whole society. And, just yeah, the whole society. Christopher Reeve and all that stuff will come back and it will come back in, in season seven. Season seven. Uh which I will say, I will say though. I do like do you, so so now you know Jason killed Genevieve Teague. Were, were you like what? What are your it, thoughts on Jason? Yeah, he killed. You know, he killed Bridget Crosby, not Genevieve Teague. He killed Crosby, his yeah, mom. Bridget Crosby. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Yeah, well, between her. what we learn from uh from the ending and that is like, well, we're getting a heel Jason at this point. Like he's officially a bad guy now. Mm-hmm. Do you think that Jason? Do you think Jason like has well, Lana will forget? Do you think Jason? What do you think his motive is with Lana? I uh, well your prediction. I mean, well, Lana's still connected to Isabel, so I imagine that that has a lot to do with it. It's I I don't I'm sure it has something to do with like the whole prediction of uh the Teague's line being erased and Isabel having something to do with it, so I'm sure that's gonna come to a head. But Jason did brought up that Isabel had vowed to take revenge on the descendants, which is the Teague family, which is the mother's side, Genevieve Teague, to take revenge. Which, I mean, you know, I do like, I do like that we're getting, it feels the only thing, it doesn't feel like we're starting to get the same storyline from season three, only this time instead of Adam keeping an eye on Clark, it's Jason keeping an eye on Lana. Oh, yeah, good point. That It felt like, yeah, they're re, they're recycling the same plot again from season three with Adam like, hey, spying on... Was- Jason, the only reason he was here, his mother, his mother, he was hired by his mother to come and keep a spy on Lana, you know, because they're afraid about the stupid freaking spell. I'm like, does it really make a lot of sense? Like, it feels like the writers were like, all right, what do we do with Jensen? Well, we're going to make him a love. It feels like in the first half of the series, they're like, oh, we're going to set him up as the boyfriend, his awesome boyfriend. Then the second, it feels like with Adam, they Adam made Adam a cool character. They're going to make him Batman. Then they made him a, like a lunatic at the end. And then now this one, they're like, all right, we got to make him like a a secret society member of Illuminati, basically. And he they're, they, they're afraid that you're going to wipe out their bloodline. So we they are they're, they're, so he's there to spy on you. So that way he can't. So that way they protect their, save their faith. It I'm feels like, like it was an odd timing by the time that Lana went to Paris. And suddenly they found the right time to spy on Lana, take Isabel's tomb, touch the, touch the place of the symbol, and then get taken as a vessel by the, by the, um, 
in Ancestors Witch. By the way, Christina Crump was on Talkville last, this past week. Yeah, I saw that. Said, she said that the tattoo was the tramp stamp. They said that she said the tramp stamp on me. Yeah. That's she the said, first oh, the thing she brought it. That's the first thing she said. Oh, the tramp they stamp. Said, they asked her why they put it there. And he says, because I didn't want to have to wear it. Like if it's on my arm, you know, I wear a low C shirt. So I said, put it where they won't see it. They're like, tramp stamp. And they're like, I'm like, <laughs> she goes, okay. Because <laughs> she said, imagine if it was on my neck or a face or something. That'd be stupid. <laughs> she said, Get the you know, mic. Or, on your, or on your chest. On her face like, like, that. like she said, they say you could be post Malone before post Malone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they were like, but yeah, she said she that's why it was there. She finally said it was the tramp stamp was there because she requested it be there. So that way she not every episode you have to put that tattoo on. And so, which I will say, I do like that, you know, like Lex covered that up for the, you know, and, and Jason then calls his mom and says, you know, Jason suspecting Lex of murder, but then it turns out at the end is that you know hey look you know like hey m- mom he covered it up and everything and so you know also jason being revealed as the murderer was really cool and i also like that i also like that the the scene my favorite scene of the episode is whenever dawn put grab is chloe and then everybody's like laughing at chloe so then chloe goes and said and knocks the fuck out of jonathan Kent, and then she touches clark and clark goes ah crown's mine bitch and then he's bitch slaps her across the room and that was i was great. like yes yes that is so funny I'm first sure time Ryan we see laughing. tom welling performing as a girl i'm just saying that was so funny ryan what was your reaction whenever you saw that as i was checked out by that point so i was just like yep what, what that was the funniest scene that I've seen I Tom Ryan, do. Ryan's, Ryan's <laughs> playing playing Don, playing what? the mean girl. <laughs> Ryan's this would have been Ryan's meme. He would have had the meme. You know, I'm talking about the meme of the guy that's in the NBA locker room. And he goes, "What, bro? What are you talking <laughs> about, man?" <laughs> <laughs> like that would have been Ryan's like meme because he's like, like seriously, like and then on top of that, he goes, "Seriously, Mister Kent, there's no stopping me." And I'm just like, <laughs> can't <laughs> stop me, Mister Kent. Like, this is just like. Tom Welling is like, he went from an eight to a 10 right then and there. It's like, he was already at an eight when he said, Crown's mine, bitch. Genius. And then he's like, like, how did Jonathan, how did Jonathan know Don Styles' name? He never even brought that up to I know, to, to, it never made sense. It never made any sense. And then on top of that, he just, and then she, he kills her at the end. But I'm like, honestly, that to me was my favorite scene. I still quote that where he's like, Crown's mine, bitch. <laughs> like, he's like he, he bitch slaps her bitch slaps her i did not notice till today he bitch slapped her <laughs> like uh, the, how he uh, didn't break her neck it makes no sense because she should have had her neck broken by that bitch true. slap because that was a hard slap like me uh me in the future put in the clip of roman reigns saying that's garbage man come on <laughs> <laughs> i'm <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i mean seriously it just all we needed next was like like he should have literally put la la on him you make me want to la la the kitchen and the floor and if we just had clark dancing to that as he was doing it like or if he was humming la la as he was doing that he's like and he was just getting the mop and going you make me want to la la in the kitchen and the as the dad was coming that would have been even funnier i would have been like oh, oh, oh boy <laughs> and like i'm like like because like four times we've are three or maybe it was two or three times that we've heard don listen to that song and i'm just like that must be her favorite song you know ashley simpson must have been like i got a lot of money on this episode oh of course they of course she did yeah she was big she was big at the time i mean this must have been like a studio note to have this song in there Oh yeah, they promoted that. They promoted that during the, the during commercial break. <laughs> this song is brought to you by Ashley Simpson. Brought to you by Ashley Simpson. <laughs> yeah, pick up the album today. <laughs> you know, which oh, uh, go pick up that like, album today at Target. <laughs> or pick it up at Circuit City. Oh that. <laughs> but, uh, I, which, I, I, I just thought this that was a funny moment, especially he's like, What are you doing to me, Kent? Mr. But also, Kent. but also, they were but definitely promoting like Lifehouse because their album just came beautiful. out in two thousand five. They literally promoted that on purpose. It's you and me. They well, played three I songs. Sure they did play three major songs: "Blind," "Come Back Down," and "You and Me." I mean, I mean, that I, was I a love, great ending. I love me some Lifehouse, so I was not complaining. They ripped off though Buffy at the end because at the end of season three of Buffy, when Buffy like they're giving like Buffy has her prom episode, and after she's done saving a day, they give her. 
like award night. Buffy Summers for saving us, and then her her the man of her dream shows up, and then they dance together, and then it's like she's happy, and it's just that they play beautiful song, and I'm like, this is just like fucking Smallville, and I'm like, all right now, I'm like, you know what's funny like when, when you know what's funny when when like Chloe got the crown, making her a little when Don was making that little speech, I was hoping that the fucking prince will come out. Hey, they usually we usually just take the crown and go from Mean Girls. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we don't uh, usually give girls. speeches. <laughs> we don't usually give speeches. Well, nowadays you got to get set up there and give a speech. Eh? You know, I would like to think, you know, I would like to think this person, I would like to think this person, and like, it's, you won a prom queen, you didn't win, like, you didn't win a humanity. You didn't win an award. Oscar, you, you didn't win an Oscar. <laughs> you won an, you literally won a war for looking prettier, that's, that's all you won. Seriously, people just, prettier. seriously, people just take the crown and go. <laughs> yeah, literally, and it's always like, you just go like this. That, that was the whole part of the joke from Mean Girls, <laughs> when Lindsay Lohan yeah. was giving her a little speech. I'm just saying, I did. I did really enjoy. I did enjoy this episode. I know you guys hated it, but I've always enjoyed this. This the, my two favorite episodes as a kid watching this season is always Spell and Spear, because it has a great soundtrack. And it's just funny to enjoy. Spirit, I think, is funny. I know Spell is fun, but this is funny. You're like this is literally played for laughs. This whole episode. I will say that it's it's as much as I hate this episode, but it was so funny to watch. It's it was hilarious. To watch. It's it was like still it's funny. Boring. You can't. You gotta admit, Ryan. It's at least entertaining to watch. It's literally. You can't say it's not terrible. I'm just like, oh, this is. Just... I mean, ironically, sure, but it's. <laughs> I I don't know, but let's just go to ratings, Jacob. What about you? No, oh, he's just God damn, Like Ryan's right. like, can we just wrap this shit up with this episode, guys? <laughs> Ryan's like, oh, I hated this episode. It's burning hell. The track. again, I didn't hate it. It just <laughs> like, like, like I just. I just sit there like, just why? Like, just why? For 42 minutes, just why? <laughs> Every decision is Ryan's like, Ryan's like uh, the critic Roger Ebert saying, I admire what he did, but I hate and it. I hate it, yes. Play that clip, by the way. Of me. <laughs> oh, it's going in. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I will say, if I had to give this a grading, I would say it's an 8 out of 10. Damn. All right. <laughs> Matt, what about you? I do hate this episode. It's my least favorite episode of the whole season, period. But also, I will admit, it was funny. To, it was hilarious and fun to watch at times. And I will give them props for putting Lifehouse and Cameo performing, which I love it. I'm a sucker for that with, the, with a little bit of nostalgia for early 2000s music. And I did love the moment when Clark and Lana do a little bit of have their moment. I enjoyed that. That was a good moment, too. So, yeah, it's a four out of ten. It's it's a four out of ten. Not even a five. You so, gotta, you, a five would have been like, come on, a five. You got to at least go five. You it's a it, like, it's still a bad episode because that's fucking Don was so stupid. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I, I will get say there are some dumb moments. Very much like you got to turn. It's like episode you have to turn off your brain. I know, but I was like, why do we need this? <laughs> I'm going four out of ten as well. This was just not fun to sit through. And uh, with the exception of Lifehouse, all four of my stars are going to Lifehouse and Lifehouse alone. The rest of this episode could just go. Did, did you know that they, they're doing another when Lois made a little bit of a foreshadowing that she doesn't believe that Clark will be in the big leads in Metropolis? The whole Trumpet Reporter thing. I was like, and those fans like, oh, don't worry, Lois. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> But uh, I pass it off to all of you. What did you all think of these three episodes? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to read what you have to say. And next week will be the last traditional episode of Small Talk of season four. And then it is the yeah. season four finale. Next week we will be Jesus. covering. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a little bit. I know. Next week we're breaking these down the last three episodes. Three episodes. The, the stuff with Lex and Lionel is so good in the next three episodes. Oh yeah, I I can't remember which I gotta remember which one was it. I think it was oh, like um, I'm yeah, this was like the forever episode. In these next three episodes, you will find out every single thing about the Teagues and why every all their motivations will be revealed in these next three episodes. Oh yeah, it will definitely will. It, it's gonna pay off by these next by three episodes. Episode. You'll know everything. You're like, all right, you'll see all the cards. Yeah, because we're getting into the episode blank and ageless and forever, which they were really good episodes. Forever, I, oh my god, forever. The Lex and Lionel stuff in Forever is so damn good. Yes, I agree. Oh, I Ryan's totally agree, it. dude. This is where Ryan's it started to get that. juicy because that's literally building up to the finale from from the with Lex and uh, Lionel. Oh yeah, like seriously, why I cannot wait. I cannot wait for Ryan to see Forever. 
because not the the Clark storyline's stupid, but like the Lex and Lionel stuff is really. Good. I don't think the no, not the Clark storyline, but the other subplot thing was kind of ridiculous. I the get what they were trying to do. The yeah, sub those all. But as for like the Lex and Lionel storyline, which is a better storyline. Oh yeah, episode, I completely agree it's with you. So good. I'm like, oh, that that should have been a storyline and not B storyline. I know, no, I like, I I did like the uh, Clark storyline, but the other subplot, you know what I'm talking about, was stupid. I did not like that. I know. Take well, that like, out, and I like everything else. Ryan's like, tell me. Yeah, he's you like know. Loki. Tell me. No, I, you know, I, I sworn you both to secrecy, so it'd be rather hypocritical of me to say, like, you know what? Just tell me everything. No, well, we no, wouldn't no, tell no, you no, if no, you no. asked us. No. Dude, we're li- dude, we're literally close. You're all right. You know what happens? Clark gets turned to a dog, and then a bunch of dolls get like he gets into a cockfight with a rooster, and Lex becomes a rooster. And then on top of that, Lionel becomes a dog, and then of course aliens come up and they try to kick their ass Dang on the it. dog. But uh, but uh, thank you all so much for watching. Comment your thoughts down below. It's a privilege to do this with Jacob and Matt every single week. Uh, Jacob, what have you got coming up on your channel? Uh, you know, I am just I am got I just did a review for Hogwarts Legacy, and uh, by this time the stairs, my review for Doom Part Two will have dropped. And my review in collaboration with Ghostbusters 2 with Jason the Old Millennial will have dropped. And then of course, by and then I and then of course I have coming out a review with Ramsey, you know, and of course on Ghostbusters 2016. And uh, I have another movie review next week that I'm gonna keep a mystery mainly because I don't know. And so basically, and I got a video game review also coming up, to which I that for um. What fucking game is it? I've been playing. Uh, fuck, I don't forget. Uh, what's it called? Starfield. Oh. So I got a review for Starfield coming up. That too. So that's my plans. Hey, and uh, Matt, your link tree as always is in the description. Tell the people where they what you've got coming up on your channel. Well, I already dropped my non-spoiler review of Doom Part 2. I've seen the movie twice, and I was so excited to talk about it. And I still got to edit my video of the Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender, so that will be up very soon. I've heard mixed things about the show. Is it any good? I thought it was good. I, I, I didn't really hate the show as many people did. I thought it, it had some good stuff in it, and it was very solid. I still prefer the animated show a little bit more, but I still think it, it, they did the best they could to stay true to the adaptation, at least. But it's better than the M. Night Shyamalan. It will get that bad taste out of your mouth and that abomination. M- M- and M. luckily, Shyamalan now that we're getting... But, look, but, but luckily, we're getting two more seasons. M. Night Shyamalan made an Avatar movie? I thought James Cameron only made the Avatar movie. Uh, let's, yeah. Let's not start that now, but... Uh... Wait, wait, so basically, how... What, did they have... Is, is Jake Sully in him in, this, in The Last Airbender? Oh, you caught me. Yeah, he's definitely in it. Totally, for sure. So, totally. I, I didn't see any blue people in that trailer, though. No, Aang's I mean, the, the, the only blue guy glows. <laughs> His I mean, eyes. I'm I'm just really just disappointed that there were no blue people. That's why I was like, "Where are the Navi's at? Come on!" Yeah, where the where the hell are they, bro? <laughs> and they could bend air now. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, take a look. Uh, take a look at Matt's channel at the link in the description. And as for subscribe this, to his OnlyFans too. <laughs> I thought you have OnlyFans, Jake. <laughs> that, I will have one soon. It'll I'm, be I'm, it'll be all fisting all the time. I'm kind of surprised it took you this long to bring that one back up, but uh, <laughs> but uh, as I'll be like for... this, I'll be like this. Oh I... God, are you actually doing it? Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! I was like, is he actually doing it? <laughs> I like. He's, he's trying to fist himself, Emerald. <laughs> he's like the girl. He's like um. He's like the girl from Mean Girls. He's like, I could put my fist in my mouth. You want to see? <laughs> no. <laughs> As for this channel, the road to Godzilla X Kong continues. We'll be taking a look. Uh, Jake Collins will be back on the channel to talk about the 2005 remake of King Kong. So that'll be coming up, as well as the 2014 Gareth Evans Godzilla and Shin Godzilla, which I have not seen. So that'll be very interesting to check out. As far as the 1999 project goes, to be completely honest, uh, Baby Geniuses kind of aged me by five years it was so bad so 
the video that is going to be going up Friday as of this recording is only going to be about that video or is going to only going to be about that movie only because I could only muster up the courage to review that one because it was so I'm bad. surprised you forced yourself to rewatch that movie. Yeah, true. I do it for the channel y'all, but uh, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be playing a little bit of catch up with that, but uh, I'm going to be releasing a separate video with the movies that I didn't cover in that one. Mm. But uh, but that's the situation going down now. It was so bad that it screwed up the content schedule. But uh, but uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, for Matt Wyatt, for Jay Collins, who has Superman stuck in his ear. I hope the Zoom catches it. <laughs> for Truth, I'm for good. Justice, for the American Way, my name is Ryan Campbell. We will see you in the next one. Y'all take care. <laughs>